Hello there, how's it going? Welcome to Exam AZ 900 Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 6 of 63, IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS. My name's Tim Warner. Today's objective from the Azure Fundamentals AZ 900 objective domain starts with the functional group Understand Cloud Concepts, continues to the objective Describe the Differences Between IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS, and then our skill, our granular skill, is Describe and Contrast IaaS, PaaS, and SaaS. These are all important acronyms that are foundational to anybody's understanding of cloud computing. Let's proceed. Whoa, Tim, what are you showing me here? Pizza as a service? Well, this is a metaphor that some person much smarter than I am invented as a way to make it easier to understand the difference between these different cloud deployment models. Think of how you consume pizza. First of all, if you make your pizza at home, you're responsible for the entire life cycle of that meal, aren't you? From the environment, including the oven, the dining table, all of the ingredients, you cover the entire thing. And that is analogous to traditional on-premises IT. Moving further along, if you go to a shop that offers take-and-bake pizzas, here in Nashville, Tennessee, we have a company called Papa Murphy's. You may be familiar with it. You can walk in and get a pizza all ready to bake. In that case, you're trusting the provider for the ingredients, but you as a customer still bring that pie back to your home and you use your electricity to cook that pizza and then your dining environment to serve it. That's analogous to infrastructure as a service, or IaaS. If you do pizza delivery, you're outsourcing most of the life cycle of that pizza, aren't you? You're relying upon the pizza vendor to actually create and bake the pie using all of their resources and even pay for somebody to come bring it to your home or to your office or whatever. And all you're responsible there for is the environment in which you consume the pizza. This is analogous to platform as a service or PaaS. Finally, we have in a dine-out situation where you go to eat pizza in a restaurant, all you literally need to do is sit there, eat, and then walk away. The preparation, the presentation, the cleanup is all managed for you by the vendor. This is analogous to software as a service, or SaaS. Now let's get more into the tech so you understand how these different terms relate to, say, the Microsoft Azure Cloud versus your on-premises local IT infrastructure. In an on-premises data center, you're managing the entire environment, the physical networking layout, the data center, the power, the servers. And then on the servers, there's, of course, the operating system and applications and their dependencies, fully locally managed, locally responsible. Once we start working with Azure, a lot of companies, I find, gravitate initially towards infrastructure as a service because it's most familiar to them. In this case, we're allowing Microsoft, the cloud vendor, to provide the physical infrastructure for our virtual machines. In other words, they provide the data centers and the hardware hosts, and then we can run virtual machines, maybe migrate them from our on-premises environment into Azure. And once they're there, we're responsible for the security and the availability and the operational behavior of those virtual machines. So infrastructure gives you lots and lots of control but you're still missing out on many of the key features of the public cloud, things like elasticity and scalability, high availability, as I said, you're responsible for in an infrastructure as a service environment. What I like to do as an Azure solutions architect is present platform as a service or PaaS products in Azure, where you're relying more on the cloud vendor. As you can see here, Microsoft is managing most of your service stack, but it gives you the freedom to focus more granularly and specifically on the service itself rather than getting hung up with backups, security optimization, configuration, tuning, tweaking, that kind of stuff. Lastly, we have software as a service, or SaaS, which is basically you're interacting with a service as a customer. It's a packaged, fully managed application. And in this case, if it's a Microsoft SaaS product, you have limited access under the hood to the underlying platform. I want you to see that as you work from left to right, from on-premises to IaaS to PaaS to SaaS, you're gradually surrendering more and more control and allowing Microsoft or whoever your cloud vendor is to handle the infrastructure. But at the same time, the trade-off is that you can focus more granularly on the service that you're offering your customers 
and you can take advantage of Microsoft's massive GeoScale. For example, imagine trying to geo-distribute a SQL Server database yourself using local data centers. Think of how expensive and cumbersome that would be. In Azure, you can geo-replicate a database. It could be Azure SQL Database or Cosmos DB. There's lots and lots of choices that we'll get to eventually with literally a line of Azure PowerShell or a few clicks of the mouse. It's pretty powerful. In fact, let's jump into the demo so I can illustrate that. Let's start with infrastructure as a service. I'm here in the Azure portal and I'm going to browse to the virtual machines blade. And this is where you can create virtual machines directly in Azure. You can migrate them from your on-premises environment, but once they're here, they're running in Azure. You don't have to worry about that underlying physical infrastructure. But beyond that, you're fully responsible for the life cycle of that virtual machine, including backup, security, availability, all of that good stuff. And notice that we can connect to the VM using common management protocols like RDP, that's what we use in Windows, Remote Desktop Protocol, Secure Shell or SSH for Linux, and there's a new product in the Azure portfolio called Bastion, where you can connect your virtual machines directly within the web browser without using external software at all. And as a matter of fact, this machine that you're looking at right now, this Windows Server desktop, is actually a virtual machine that is in itself running in Azure. So again, this is a reason why IaaS is so popular among many customers who are especially newer to the cloud because they can continue to manage their Azure hosted virtual machines pretty much identically to how they do so those virtual machines on premises. As an example as a platform as a service product, I'm going to browse to the SQL databases blade where I've created a hosted SQL Server database that runs the Microsoft AdventureWorks sample data set. And I had mentioned to you some of the great agility you can get when you're running a platform as a service offering. App Service would be a Microsoft Azure offering for hosted web applications. Cosmos DB is a platform offering for NoSQL or non-relational database. Azure SQL Database, there's actually a few different products in that family, are various ways to host SQL Server databases in the cloud. But notice here this geo-replication option. This is what I was talking about a moment ago, that you can take advantage of Microsoft's worldwide footprint and put this database in a highly available configuration where it's replicated around the world to different Azure regions. This not only gives you excellent high availability and potential for disaster recovery failover, but you're also putting the data physically nearer to your customers where they are in the world. And the fact that you can do that just with a couple mouse clicks, like I said, you just choose your target region and fill out this create secondary blade and click OK. In five to 10 minutes, you've got yourself geo replication happening. It's just amazing how that works. Lastly, we have software as a service or SaaS. And you know, the Office 365 products are a perfect example of a packaged software as a service application. And on my machine here, I've installed OneDrive for Business. This is a Microsoft's cloud file storage system. There's OneDrive for consumers and OneDrive for business for businesses. I'm using the business version. And so that means I have an Office 365 subscription. What's beautiful about SaaS apps is that they're so internet aware. You can normally run a SaaS app just with a web browser, which means you can get to it from anywhere in the world on any device pretty much. Oftentimes, SaaS apps will have a desktop application like this OneDrive client you see here, but we just as well can go to OneDrive.com and log into our Office 365 subscription. And here we have browser-based versions of the Office applications, as you can see, and I can go to OneDrive and see the very same file list I saw a moment ago with my desktop application. And the point I'm trying to make here is that these SaaS applications are hosted in the cloud, available anywhere in the world. Most of the time, you just need an HTTPS internet connection, and they make your data ubiquitous. There's nothing stopping you at all from creating your own SaaS applications in Azure. Azure is a perfect hosting ground for creating your own SaaS applications. Last thing I want to mention about this OneDrive is that with SaaS apps, you'll normally want to give your customers some programmatic access to the app. In the case of OneDrive, I did a little research before I started this lesson. It looks like Microsoft doesn't officially have say a PowerShell module, but I found on the PowerShell gallery a community submission, a module called OneDrive. As you can see, I'm just in a PowerShell session here. I could do a get command from the module OneDrive, 
and see that there's a number of commandlets. So this is another way to access a SAS app. There's normally the front way where you're going through some kind of user interface, and then SAS apps will normally expose what are called application programming interfaces or APIs, where you can interact with the data programmatically. For instance, you might create a web application that needs to interact with OneDrive. You would go about that using APIs. For learning resources, I always start with the Azure Fundamentals Learning Path at Microsoft Learn. Look up the article Types of Cloud Services, timw.info forward slash cs1. For more information on that pizza as a service metaphor, go to timw.info forward slash pizza. Thanks very much for hanging with me and joining me on this journey. I'm enjoying it. I hope you are as well. You can find me at Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. My plural site courses are at timw.info forward slash ps. And my website is techtrainertim.com. Happy studying. Take good care.